another episode of Water Safety Watch and Learn. Today we'll be learning all about how to stay safe at a beach and what different activities we can do there. We'll also be conducting a science experiment. But first let's head down to coastal Victoria to see what we can find at my local beach. the beach today with my friend Jess because remember we never go to the beach alone and we never swim alone. We've checked the weather conditions and we've also looked at the map to work out the safest way to get there. So let's go! Sorrento Back Beach. We'll find these beach safety signs at all the different entry points to the beach. These signs tell us the important information we need to know about the waterway, as well as the different dangers and what we can expect at this beach. So let's have a closer look now at what this sign tells us about Sorrento Back Beach. These are some warnings. Strong currents, deep water, slippery rocks, high surf, submerged rocks, and unstable cliffs. These are regulations. These are not allowed. Dogs, horses, motorbikes or push bikes, camping and fires. In the event of an emergency, call 000 and tell them the code that appears on the sign. This is the code for Sorrento Back Beach, but this code will be different at other waterways. Life Saving Services Sorrento Back Beach is patrolled only when the red and yellow flags are displayed by lifesavers. What does this mean? When a beach is patrolled, we will see the red and yellow flags set up to show us the safest place to swim. We'll also see lifesavers or lifeguards actively patrolling that area between the flags. Let's see if this beach is patrolled today. today, we can't see any red and yellow flags on the beach or lifesavers or lifeguards patrolling that area between the flags. So we won't go swimming today because remember we always have to swim at a patrolled beach and always swim between the red and yellow flags. So what else could we do if we can't go swimming at this beach today? Some 
sometimes we might see rock pools appear at a beach. Rock pools are home to many different creatures. What sorts of creatures might we find in a rock pool? A rock pool is a pool of seawater that is left between rocks on a beach after a wave flows back into the sea. If you do not disturb the surface of the water, you may be able to see lots of different things like shells, limpets, mussels, oysters, barnacles, sea stars, seaweed, anemones, sea urchins, crabs, shrimps, snails, worms, seaweed sponges, and much more. Rock pools are beautiful to look at, but best not touched. Rock pools are also home to one of the most dangerous sea creatures known as the blue ringed octopus. In fact, it's one of the most venomous animals on the planet. The blue ringed octopus is very hard to spot. It camouflages in the rocks and can be as small as a 50 cent coin. When angry, blue rings appear and there can be deadly consequences if you are bitten. Now that we know about the importance of wearing life jackets, do you know how they work? Let's find out. In front of me, you can see we've got two jars filled with tap water. We've also got two oranges, but they look a little different to each other. Can you spot the difference between these two oranges? That's right. One has its skin on and the other is peeled. We're going to see what happens when we put these oranges into the jars of water. Can you predict what will happen when we put the oranges into the water? Will they sink or will they float?
Let's test out if your prediction was correct. Wow, what can you see happening here? We can see that the orange with its skin on is floating, but the orange with its skin off has sunk right to the bottom. What does this tell us about the way life jackets work? Why did the orange without its peel, which is lighter than the unpeeled orange, sink? This is because of buoyancy and the importance of a peel to keep an orange afloat. When an orange is placed in water, there are two forces at work. These are gravity, which pulls the orange down towards the earth, and buoyancy, which is the force that pushes the orange up. The weight of the unpeeled orange is equal to the gravitational force. At the same time, the buoyant force is the same as the weight of the water that the orange has displaced. Because of this, the unpeeled orange floats. The orange peel does add to the weight of the orange, so we might have expected it to sink. But this peel actually helps displace enough water that is equal to or greater than the weight of the orange, allowing the unpeeled orange to remain buoyant and float. Just like a life jacket, the peel is filled with pockets of air that allow the orange to be less dense and therefore float. When the peel is removed, the orange cannot displace enough water and the gravitational force becomes stronger than the force of buoyancy. The peeled orange becomes more dense and sinks to the bottom. How does this demonstrate the way life jackets work? Can you explain what happened in this experiment and come up with a conclusion with the results that we found? So everyone, it's time for you to have a go at your own activity. Make sure you remember all the water safety messages we learned in today's episode and we'll see you next time.